Namaste everyone, I am Gyan and you are watching the session 5 of Java and Web, user defined data types. In this video, we will learn about the class level variables, that is static variables. We have already seen this slide in the previous session. If you declare a variable inside the class, which is not inside any method of the class, then this variable is called instance variable. But if you declare a variable inside a class and write a static word before it, then the variable becomes a static variable. When we declare a variable inside a method, then this variable is called the local variable. As we already know that the instance variables are the part of the objects. If a class has 10 objects, then there will be 10 different instance variables for each object separately. And local variables are the part of the method. The local variables gets created in the stack frame of a method. So the local variables are the part of the methods. Now what we want is, can we have some variables which are common among objects of the same class? means can we have class level variables? The answer is yes, we can have. And those variables are called static variables. The static variables of a class gets located into the method area with the byte code of the class at the time of class loading. We can declare a data member as a static by using the modifier static. We have already seen this slide several times. This slide shows the various modifiers can be used in Java and at this time we are going to use the static modifier. Here you can see we have two classes, the class add and the class main. The class main contains the method main. The class add has two data members. First one is integer and other one is float. The float data member is of type static. So the integer data member will be different for the different objects of the class add. But the float data member will be same for the all objects of the class add. We need to execute the byte code of the class main because the class main contains the method main. So first we need to compile the java file calc.java. Java C space calc.java. The compilation produced two class files, add.class and main.class. Then after we need to pass the class name main to the JVM because the class main contains the method main. The JVM starts execution and various memory areas of the JVM gets created. Here we have shown three JVM memory areas, method area, heap and stack. After that byte code of the class main gets loaded into the method area. And the bytecode of the class main starts its execution from the method main. So the stake frame of the method main gets created into the stake area of the JVM memory. The location for the variable ARGS gets created on the stake frame of the method main. The variable ARGS contains some address. What type of address is contained by the variable ARGS? We will see about it in the later sessions of Java and Wave. Then after we need to create a new object of type add. After execution of this statement, the bytecode of the class add gets loaded into the method area. With the bytecode, the other class level data, that is static variables of the class head, gets loaded into the method area. So the bytecode of the class head with the static variable f gets loaded into the method area. Since we already have assigned the static variable f by 4.7, that's how the value of the float variable f is 4.7 in the method area. After class loading, a new object of the class head will be created whose address will be stored into the reference variable a. Here you can see in this line, after creation of new object, we have to store the address of the newly created object into the reference variable a of type add. So the reference variable a, which is local to the method main, contains the address of the object created in the heap area. The instance variable i gets located within the object. But the static variable f is not contained within the object. The static variable f is in method area and the static variable is common for the each object. Whereas the instance variable i is not common for the each object. For each object, there will be separate different i. Then after we are printing the values of instance variable i and the static variable f. Both can be accessed using the object reference. When it prints a dot i, means we want to print the instance variable i of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a. That means we want to print this i. But when we print the a dot f, here f is the static variable means we want to print the variable f which is stored into the method area. And although we are using the object reference to print the variable f, but this variable f is common for all objects. After this line, the method main finishes its execution and the stack frame of the main erased from the stack. After the method main finishes its execution, the execution of the JVM will come to an end. Here in this case, we have two objects of the class add. So the both objects have been created into the heap area with the different instance variables i. The object referenced by the reference variable a has different i and the object referenced by the reference variable a1 has different i. So both objects have different i. But the static variable f is common for both the objects. 
the same static variable f is used for this object and the same static variable f is used for this object. Here you can see we are printing the values of i and f using the reference variable a. So while printing the a dot i, it prints this i. But while printing the a dot f, it prints this f. Similarly for the object whose reference is stored into the reference variable a1, if we are printing the a1 dot i, it will print this i. But if you print a1 dot f, it will print this f. So the static variable f is common for both the objects. Does not matter using which reference variable, you are using the static variable f. So in the first print ln statement, it will print 2 and 4.7. In the second print ln statement, it will print 2 and 4.7. This is the same code as we seen before. Here the class add has the instance variable x and static variable y. We have two objects of the class add whose references are stored into the reference variables a1 and a2. The instance variable x is different for both the objects, but the static variable y is common for both the objects. Here we are printing the instance variables as a1.x. That means instance variable x of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a1 gets printed. But here you are printing the static variable y using the reference variable a1. So in this case the static variable y which is common for both objects will be printed. Here again we are printing the instance variable x of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a2. So printing a2.x prints 3. And in this case we are printing the static variable y which is common for both objects. So printing a1.y and printing a2.y prints the same variable which is stored into the method area. Here in this case we are changing the instance variable x of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a1. So if you change the instance variable x of a given object then the instance variable x of other object is not going to be changed because the instance variable x is different for different objects. So instance variable x of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a1 gets changed to 6 from 3. And here in this line, in this line we are changing the static variable y. But since the static variable y is common for the both objects, so even if we are changing the static variable y using the reference variable a1, but it got changed for the other object also since the static variable y is common for both the objects. So initially when we print a1.x it prints 3, when we print a1.y it prints 4, again we print a2.x it prints 3, we print a2.y it prints 4. But after changing the value, when we print a1.x it will print 6 because a1.x has been changed to 6 and when we print a1.y it will print 7 because the static variable y which is common for both objects has been changed to 7. That's why it will print 7. Here we are printing the a2.x. The instance variable x of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a2 has not been changed. So printing the a2.x will still print 3 because a2.x has not been changed. But printing the a2.y prints 7 because the static variable y was common for both objects refreshed by a1 and a2. So something has been changed using a1 also got changed using a2. Let me try this code in a Java program open calci.java and this is the same code as we seen. Let me save and compile this code. Java C calci.java. It compiles fine. They run it Java main. See the class main contains the method main. It runs fine printing a1.x is equal to 3, a1.y is equal to 4, a2.x is equal to 3, a2.y is equal to 4. a1.x is equal to 6. The value of a1.x now has been changed and a1.y is equal to 7. The value of the static variable y also got changed. Then we print a2.x is equal to 3. The instance variable x which belong to a2 does not got affected by the change. But the static variable y which is common for both a1 and a2 got changed. It prints a2.y is equal to 7. If the static variable is common for all the objects then it's not necessary to access the static variables using the object reference. Because it does not matter which object reference you are using to access the static variable, the static variable itself is going to be same every time. So why not access the static variable using the class name only? So that's how using the class name only we can access the static variable. Here in these two lines we have printed older instance variables and the older static variable. Here we have changed the instance variable x of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a1 to 6. And since the static variable y is common for both the objects, so we can change the static variable y just by using the class name. So here we are changing the static variable y just by using the class name add.y is equal to 7. After we have changed the static variable y, 
when we print a1.y it will print 7 now and when we print a2.y it will again print 7 because the static variable is common for both the objects and has been changed by using the class name. Printing a1.x prints the change instance variable of an object whose reference is stored into the reference variable a1. But the instance variable x of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a2 has not been changed. That's how printing a2.x still prints 3. So in one line we can say the static variables are class level variables. So they can be accessed by using the class name. Let me use the static variable by using the class name. Open calc.java and write here add.y is equal to 7. Let me save and compile this code. Java C, calc.java, compiles find, then run it, Java main. It runs find and printing the same output. Even we can print the static variable y just by using the class name. Right here, add.y. And right here again, add.y. So it does not matter we are using the static variable y using the reference variable or using the class name. It is going to access the same static variable y every time. Let me save and execute this code. Java C, calc.java, compiles find, then run it. Java main, it runs find and printing the same result. Just like instance variables, the static variables can also be private, but then other classes cannot use it directly. That means if the static variable is private, then the other classes cannot use the static variables by using the object reference or by using the class name. Just similar to private instance variables, in this case also we need a method to use the static members. We will see about it in the later video. Let me try this code practically. Open calc.java and write here private. Make the static variable y private. Save and compile this code. Java C, calc.java. Compiler throws error in those lines where the private variable y has been used. You can see here all the errors says y has private access in the class add. Unlike static variables, the stress variables cannot be accessed just by using the class name. Since the stress variables are different for different objects. And if you try to use the stress variables by using the class name, then the compiler cannot figure out that the instance variable of which object you want to use. So the compiler throws an error for accessing the instance variable using the class name. Let me try this code practically. Open calc.java and write here add dot x is equal to 5. Let me save and compile this code. Java C calc.java compiler throws the error non static variable x cannot be referenced from the static context. You remember that static means common and non static means not common. So something which is common for all the objects can be accessed using the class name and something which is different for the different objects can be used using the object references. In this code we have not initialized any value to the various static variables. All these static variables will be common for the, all the objects of the type add. If the programmer does not provide the initial values to the static variables, then the compiler will provide the initial values to the static variables. And the values provided by the compiler to the static variables is called the default values of the static variables. We already have seen this type of example with the instance variables. There we have printed the default values of the instance variables. In the similar way, here we are printing the default values of the static variables. The default value provided by the compiler to the static integer is 0. To the static float is 0, 0.0. To the static character is Unicode 0. So here we are trying to print a character whose Unicode is 0. The default value provided by the compiler to the static byte variable is 0. To the static long variable is 0. To the static double is 0, 0.0. To the static sort is 0. And since the variable of type string is a reference variable, so the default value provided by the compiler to the static string variable is null. If we print a.s, it will print null. We can create object of the same class as the data member of the same class. But in this case, the variable m is the reference variable. So the default value provided by the compiler to the static reference variable is null. That's how when we print a.m, it will print null. This is a task for you to apply this code practically in a Java program. This is a task for you to find what the value compiler provides to the static boolean variable. We cannot use a static modifier for a local variable. 
means local variable is local to the method and that local variable will be created into the stack frame of the given method in the stack area of the JVM memory. And the static variable is the common variable for all the objects in the program. So applying the static modifier before the local variable does not make any sense. Because the static variables are the class level members, they are not local to a method and comment out all the main body. Finally write here static int i is equal to 2. Let me try to compile this code java c calc.java. Compiler throws an error illegal start of expression static integer i is equal to 2. We cannot use the static modifier for a local variable. We cannot use like this. That's all for this video guys. Don't forget to like and share this video. Subscribe this channel if you are new and leave your valuable comments in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.